You know, I watch a lot of videos, man, a lot of videos on YouTube about businesses, YC, uh, um, Y Combinator uh, videos, um, what's the other accelerator program? Pretty much content on entrepreneurship from different people and all those things. But the common denominator with all those videos is that most of this most of those people that you know uh especially white combinators and all those things not to knock them out right but most of this content the background of the people they have you know nice background right they have access to some network most a lot of them are, went to ivy league school and i don't see that much content i see some but i don't see that much content from people entrepreneurs that really had a, a rough background or come from really you know low income background that started as entrepreneurship and really share their story and um and yeah i mean and 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 in this world i mean obviously if you went to harvard and you're starting a business you 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 gonna have more uh, what you call much more leeway, much more benefits, and much more access than somebody went to public school, let alone somebody went to a, a school in rural area somewhere in Africa, right? With no network, no nothing. So you definitely gonna have uh, uh, you know a lot more advantages. Uh, a, a lot more benefits, and and that's what I want to talk about today. But today I want to talk about what would you do? You know, I was thinking about it a few days ago, and I said, if you come from a from a low income background, right, you have no resources or very little resources. You, what would you do? What what would you do to get to the next level? And you want to start entrepreneurship? What would be my advice to you, you know, uh, looking back now, being in business for over 20 years, you know, and, and, and um, what would be my advice to you, basically? And the first step I would do is to decide what sector you want to be in that's the first thing you need to do right what 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 should you do uh what in what sector should you get it because again you have to go and i always talk about that you have to reverse engineer everything pretty much but you, you have to know where you're going so you can plan to get there and so this is the first thing you'll start what sector and you have to be specific my advice to you will be in the agricultural business and yes you know i've done i've done i've never been in agribusiness me personally i've done tech i've done logistics i've done e-commerce way way back in the days before e-commerce was even a, a thing you know I, I dip a little bit in e-commerce but i will do agribusiness i'll tell you why because Food will always be a necessity, number one, right? To bring revenue in the agribusiness is much, much faster. It's a known business, a known cycle. The population growth make it where the demand is going to keep increasing, at least for the next 30 to 50 years. So at least you have a guarantee on that level, right? And even though the... the, the the value chain is kind of fragmented, you know, it's improving a lot. Technology is already solving a lot of that. Distribution to the end user, distribution to businesses, aggregated 
uh, food into centralized centers to better distribute. But production is still a big challenge. But what I would do, though, is I would start a co-op. I'll, I'll talk to five, ten of my friends to come together because I don't have any money. I don't have any resources. I might have a, a plot of land or no cousin, an uncle, a brother, a, a friend, a, a parent uh, that may have lots and all those things. But I organize, you know, and I come with, with a group of people uh, to, to better, you know, to, to grow faster. And I will look for specific skill sets. Let's say you're good in business, right? Um, what I'll look for is somebody who's very good in organizing uh, small farmers in my community and, and beyond if I grow, right? And then we can work the land. Uh, the other gr some group will be working some of the land, right? And today the great thing is, is hydroponics technology. Now you can grow food in pretty much uh, with, with no land surface. So that's another topic. But... Um, I look for a group of people to move fast and delegate. Uh, I'll say five to ten. I will stick to five because the more people you bring, obviously, the more challenges with personality, who runs what, and all can be challenging. But of course, if you if you want to work the land, you need you know manpower or woman power. So you need to really have you know a, a decent amount of people. And the good thing about the more people you have, the more they can contribute financially. So let's say you guys have. Just, you know, 10 or $100 each. Or if you have five, 10, you know, 10 people, that duplicates, right? Because everybody has to contribute. They don't have money, obviously, to contribute on time. You have to make sure, you know, they have the right skill sets. And um, they don't, uh, right, they don't uh, just hang around and all that. Just be selective. Be very, very selective. Don't pick somebody just because, right? So, I, so you know, I decide agribusiness. Okay, I start talking to a few people in my circle. Hey, this is the plan. You do a brief plan. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to achieve, right? Uh, are you in? You know, uh, is that something you're interested in? Boom. Um, and then you do that, and then you select. You come with a group that you feel comfortable with, and then you set up a structure. I would not set up a company, I would set, set up a co-op first, right? A co-op. There'll be quite a few breaks on this one, huh? so just chill, relax, and, 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 and enjoy the video. <laughs> I just don't want my tea to get cold. But um, today's an off day for me, uh, so I'm taking it easy, man. It's almost the end of the year. So... Before I lose track. So, okay, you're all ready. Now you got to decide what crops are you going to grow. Do some research. You live in a time where all the information, all the data is online. Boom. So, you you know, you guys do research. You select three, four crops you think can be a high sale locally and internationally. Not just internationally. You do not want to put all your eggs in one basket. You have to have uh, some balance. You want to definitely have a crop that has benefit here and benefit also internationally, that has high demand, uh, that you know has high return, meaning they pay decent uh, per, per kilo um, on, on, on that crop, so on and so forth. And that's, that's the research part. In parallel, what you got to do also is set up a website. <laughs> set up um, some type of digital footprint, right? Um, social media for your business, not for yourself, for your business. Digital footprint, website, so on and so forth. Because you want to be, you don't, you know, sometimes people think so small. They think, oh, I don't need any digital footprint because my customer is local. My, you know, this and that, you never know. You never know. Remember, you have limited resources. So even if you have limited resources, that doesn't mean that you got to stay limited for the rest of your life. You need to build that resource, human resource, capital resource, all that resource. You can get it online, but you got to present yourself. You have to look at the, the digital footprint as a, a, 
you, as a date, you, you know, when you, well, as a man, when you talk to a woman, you know, you, you put your best foot forward, right? And you present yourself always with the best qualities, you know, so you dress up nice, you know, you, 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 you take her to a nice restaurant, a nice place, so on and so forth. That's what the digital footprint should be. It's your presentation to the world. It's very important. If nobody knows you, guess what? Nobody can support you. Nobody can give you feedback and all those things. Nobody can partner with you. You know, we're trying to keep everything, you know, tight niche and all that, and, and we keep forgetting. You know, the world is a big, big place, man. And if you're not in this digital world, you're already lost, period. I don't care in what sector you are in. You're already lost, man. So get a digital footprint. In, in parallel also, make sure you structure the governance of your organization, whether it's a co-op company and all that, but start with a co-op. Your government, who's in charge of what? So many times I tell young people, when you do a deal or a partnership, you bring somebody in, your, 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 your idea, your business, a handshake is not enough, right? A handshake, we have short-term memory, humans. Short-term memory, you know, detail, governance, what, who does what, what's their role, what's going to be their share in the future. So there's not going to be a, 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 no, I don't remember talking about that. I don't remember this and that because guess what, man? Humans, we flip so fast when money gets involved. Everything is great when everybody's in the same level. And when, when things start going up, money start coming in. Things start getting really good. Now people want to take more credit than others. Now, you know, it's just, and that's another topic, man. My view on humans, man. Ooh, we. <laughs> that's why we're messing up this world, man. We're really messing up this world because that's the type of humans we are. We just don't care about anybody else but us, you know, but ourselves. We're so selfish to a degree that you can't imagine. So you think, think this person is your friend today? Don't think he's going to stay your friend when there's millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars involved now where they want to, you know, I, I can't tell you how many stories I know, not even personally, but people I know who got into a handshake deal and now there's a small investor. I'm talking about five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 and then woo, mayhem start breaking out. So have documentation, governance, you know, make sure that you guys have... Um, have discussed everything, everybody's is handing and everybody signs, right? And it doesn't have to go through a lawyer, right? There's a lot of templates online, but even if it's, you know, of course you have to um, certify that contract or agreement among you guys for sure, but it can be a, a basic agreement that can be updated when you get more money and all those things. But hey, your role is this, that's going to be a share. Or if you guys agree on dividing everything by five, by ten, that's fine. But you agree on something written, you know, not something verbal, right? Verbal don't mean doesn't stand in a court of law. So that's the next step. And then what you need to do is to get started. Now, there's a lot of step into this agri value chain, right? That you can add on as you grow. But what you need to do is find a supplier, a buyer, or, uh, or somebody who's gonna uh, buy your crops. What you also could do is organize with other farmers, right? But before you do that, you need to test, you need to see what are the challenges you're gonna have. And all that stuff don't take that much money. If you really need like a, a few hundreds or a few thousand, there's a lot of program out there. You can do crowdfunding. You can, you know, collect money from different people and all those things. And I, I understand some people be like, okay, well, I don't know anybody who has money and all. I totally understand, right? There's a lot of NGOs out there that help small farmers for small ticket uh, price and all those things. Your cost right now, uh, you need the seeds, right? Depending where you are in the world, depending if you're in Rundown or in East Africa, at least the soil is very rich. 
you know, you don't need any fertilizer, to be honest, for a small crop. Start something small that requires you minimum capital. And you do a test run. And you, you, you check who buy those type of crops. You know, who are the players? Because a, a huge part of your job as a group is research and network within that ecosystem. Find who does what. Who does something similar that can be your advisor also. They might not come in the, be in, in the beginning. They don't trust you. They don't know you. Who cares? But build that network. Know who's doing what. And start. Even if you have to sell that crop in the market, you know, fine. You know, now with technology, I see a lot of companies that buy, uh, 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 you know, food supply and, and resell to the end user. You don't need to do all that yourself. You know, you just supply and all those things, make sure you negotiate your rate at a so small scales. And then you see the returns. You see what went wrong, what was the problem and all those things. But you start researching also about either hydroponics or uh, what you call that, um, control environment that also does not require, I'm not talking about those control environment with ACs and all those things, but you know, to, to, to minimize insect and all those things. And when you do your first bash of sales, then you can see what went wrong, what, what, what didn't work, what works and all those things. Now you can start bringing, start negotiating with farmers and all. And I can't tell you how many equity bank started as a co-op. You know, there's a lot of businesses in Africa started at a co-op. A bunch of people got together, started something small, tested slowly and surely and cool. You know, I think, and I know it's funny for me saying that, I think the tech business is overrated, right? It, it really is. You know, it's overrated. Um, so much going on there. There's so much other opportunity that people don't see. Young, young people think, yeah, if I'm not in tech, I'm not going to be anything. Man, agribusiness to me, is the place to be right and that's why i would start i would not stop there you can even look at processing in the future you know how to process your food uh, machinery and all those things but all those things comes with a track record you know as as you sell more and more it comes with a track record that you gotta um that you got you know record and showcase and all those things that in the future, when you want to get a loan and all those things, then it'll be much, much easier. But that would be my strategy. If I was 18, 19 today, you know, and I decide I don't want to go to school, I'm not recommending you guys quitting school to do this, but, I, you know, or I don't know what to do, that's what I would start with, right? Uh, you know, I go and, and, well, I'm a city boy, but if you're in rural areas and all those things, that what, that's what I would do. I really organize myself and do something like this. You know, you're not going to be a billionaire. You, you, you might not even become a millionaire, but guess what? You know, that will be a business that you can live off, that you can grow, you know, because a business, that's what it is. You, you, you add on based on, you know, you, you build up based on your need, you know. It's, but it start everybody start at a low level, everybody, unless you inherit for somebody else. So, you build and as you see fit. If you want to grow, you grow. If you if you like what you're doing and it's fine and it's serving you, then you keep it that level. But organize yourself. Get into that sector. Do some research online and all those things. Now you have the, the, the tools to do the research. You know, and then I, I will definitely move forward. And that will your chance of success in that sector is much, much higher than any other sector I've seen in business, man. Take care. Let me know what you think about this idea, you know, and uh, if you know anybody who's done so, please share the story, man. I, I, I like to see co-op that's grown to become a conglomerate of business, uh, dom well, maybe not dominating, but at least really um, scaling to, to, to new levels. Uh, that, that'll be great, man, because we, we need to show and, and showcase businesses that don't require huge investment and all that like fintech and edtech and all this investment and we think because we we're not raising money or we can't get in business now without raising money and all those things it's ludicrous right there's businesses out there that it get you revenue instant right it's a product that everybody needs everybody wants 
and they need it over and over and over and over again. And it keeps going over and over and over. All right, man, take care and thanks. And, and if I don't put a, um, I'll talk to you all before the end of the year. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.